You like depression? Well, we got that and more on today's episode of Bros Cast Ruby Edition. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to a very depressing episode of Rebus Cast. I'm your host, Rebuscus. With me today is Aiden. Hello. And mate. I at least got some things that made me happy this episode. Good for you. Um, Minor things. Yeah. Take what you can get. Yeah. Uh, after this episode, like... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely take what you can get. Um, all right, so we're here today to talk about Volume Nine, Chapter Seven: The Perils of Paper Houses. With a title like that, you have me intrigued. Um, um, okay, so anything you guys want to say before we uh, rip the bandaid off? Because <laughs> I imagine we don't really want to talk about this episode. <laughs> In some uh, ways, yes. In other ways, I really want to talk about this episode. Yeah, let, let's just get into it. Alright, so we open up, and there's a bunch of tr uh, paper trees. And then an origami bird, out of absolutely nowhere. Um, yeah, sure. I'm sensing a theme in this place. A, a little bit, yeah. Um, Next thing we know, there's going to be a rock village and a scissor village. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing dirty about the second one. Nope. Um, anyway, so some weird uh, stick thing that's obviously not being uh, hoisted up by anything we're about to see later. No, definitely not. Um, lights up a lantern and that, that suddenly makes it daytime. Okay. Um, because that's how that works? I guess. I guess so. Um, it's the upper offer is weird. Yeah, it's true. Um... I really, I really need to learn to stop making sense, trying to make sense of this place, because it's, hmm. it's not working. We're seven episodes in, I feel like I should have learned this by now. Um, You're doing the thing you've been cr criticizing Weiss for doing the entire volume. <laughs> True. Yeah, don't think, just accept. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Um, you know what, I, I swear I made this joke in a video at some point. We need a meme of the curious cat saying, it's the ever after, I ain't gonna explain shit. <laughs> Um, but anyways, then we get the ultimate thing that has never happened since Volume 7. Team Ruby actually get some freaking sleep! Which, for those At unaware... Loss, geez. The, yeah, for those unaware, the last time that they've, like, canonically slept is Volume 7. Well, that we've seen, anyway. Um, well, that, we've, that we've seen, but, like... Yeah, but given, it... like, the events of, uh, the later half of Volume 7... All of volume eight, and now leading up to this, it's just like, girls, take a nap. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess I wouldn't be entirely surprised if they got like one night's worth of sleep because it's because like I think the the later half of volume seven to now is like a couple days. Um, Maybe. So I guess it's possible we that they did get some sleep somewhere in that time. We just didn't see it because I mean we don't really have to. But yeah, true. It's just like how the story implied it, like how events played out. It seems like they haven't. So yeah. Um. Uh, also, Yang snores. That's kind of hmm, okay. Um, um. Can I just say that the opening made me smile just because Blake and Yang's uh, mats are together. Hmm. Yeah. I'm just okay. Like, for, for a second, I thought they were color small detail, but that's really sweet. Okay, so for a second I thought they were color coded. They're not. Uh, I just noticed, but I just noticed uh, Yang was sleeping on a purple mat. I was like, is like, are they gonna pull some symbolism? Is is Blake's yellow? 
it, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Um. Um. Uh, but uh, it's lilac, which is the color of Yang's eyes. True. Now there I'm wondering. You go. There you go. Although, uh, ironically like... enough, for someone who really likes yellow, John's house is mainly blues and and purples. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Um. And then there's Rubby. Rubby's not sleeping. Um. Uh, just staring at Crescent Rose. Ah, um. Well, there's not enough time for that because explosion. Explosion so violent it uh, yoinks John awake. Um. Like also, this dude. I don't know if you guys. If you guys Sorry, go ahead. This, but as John is like running out. He's almost about to like crash into Weiss. <laughs> yeah. and then he, like, like leaps over her. Yeah. He didn't, like, I like over her. I like Weiss's like duck of duck and cover. It's like, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. But yeah, as it turns out, um, you know, there's a nearby village, and it went explodey, and now Jean has to go save it from going even more explodey. Um, while he's uh, freaking out, saying that he's late, like uh, he's always on time, he has to do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All of this, by the way, will be important later. Um, he does mention that the excitement of like you know seeing his friends again caused him to oversleep, which is uh, partly nice, but also. Um, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I guess it has been a while, hasn't it? Um, so it's both nice and depressing, which is probably going to be a theme for this episode. Um, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, the goals uh, have got to get going. But Blake points out, "Hey, yo, Ruby, where's your weapon?" Ruby's like, "Oh, I'm uh, sorry. You know, I." Just waking up. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, um, and White goes, people are counting on us. We need to go. And I wonder if that is going to be relevant later. Oh, uh -huh. oh will it ever. Um, um, like, White's is... Uh, I should probably bring this up later. but Because um, it's, it's relevant to a scene that happens later. And it calls back to a previous episode. Basically, uh, I'm going to be calling back to Weiss's little remark towards Ruby. It's like, Ruby, come on now. Um, um, and in my in my uh, reaction, it'll probably be in the highlights, I said, like, um, it's like, Weiss, come on, lay off. She's going through a lot. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, they're here, and the town's on fire. Well, kind of. There's a house on fire. Um Okay, no, scratch that. There are two. Scratch that. There are two houses on fire. My bad. Um. um and then, and oh my both. gosh, there's a tiny paper star. Yeah, who's just like, "Hi, welcome to our village. How may we serve you?" <laughs> just so casually, while everything is burning. We yeah. don't need to be be afraid. Our hero will save us. You know. Given what we learned later, this line doesn't really make sense to me. Um, is this place just Metropolis? Yes. <laughs> yes. There it we is, go. It is hey, Metropolis. Karen accepted. There you go. Um, now, now I really want like a comic where there's like John <laughs> puts on like sun like on glasses and it's like, oh, I'm not uh, I'm not the rusted knight. <laughs> I am Superman. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. um Although Jean does kind of make a Superman-like entrance and pour some water on the burning houses, I kind of thought these houses were made of paper. So, you know, it's kind of weird that you decided to pour water on it. I guess it's better than it burning, but still. Um, yeah, and the fire spreading, I guess. Mm. Um, and like John even says later, it's like as they're walking towards the water, it's like, wait, no, you'll disintegrate. Don't do that. Um, Which then begs the question, why don't... Actually, no, I'll save this point for later. Yeah, probably a good idea. Um, 
May us. Oh, do fires happen often here? He's like, oh, every day. So so nonchalant. It's like, it's like, oh yeah, the world's the world's burning every day. You know, it's no big deal. Uh, At like, this point, he's used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I forgot about this. I like the the three dots showing up. It's like, wait, what are you? What are y'all confused about? Oh, right. <laughs> um. Uh. It's like, yeah, this is a, this is my village. You know, these are the Afterns. They are they are stars, and they are in fact made out of paper. If you couldn't tell, they are, they are the paper pleasers. There you go. Yeah, they're the paper pleasers. There you go. Um. Yeah, we find out this is where he was brought after Alex left him to die. Juniper uh, brought him here. He got fixed up and was like, well, I'm going to just uh, protect this village. Yeah. Because the paper pleasers, they're one of the kindest uh, afterins, and they like to build and make the land beautiful, but they're also very clumsy, uh, according to John. So yeah. They can. So much so that they they're. Try... <laughs> so much so that they're so predictable that Jean literally catches one from flying away without even looking. Um. Um. And we also learned that he named it Ren. And then we learned later that uh, he named each star after everybody he knows. Oh, Lord. Um. Yeah, uh, in fact, we meet a red one who introduces himself as Ruby. Yeah. And, oh, my God, the, the faces that uh, the girls make. <laughs> I like how Blake is so disturbed. There's actually like a shadow over her eyes. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like, oh, this is all kinds of unsettling. Yeah. Like, Weiss is just like what Ruby's confused, Yang's confused, but Blake is like mortified. <laughs> yeah, you know it's because Blake's read enough books to know like, yeah, this is a red flag for Jean's mental health. Really, you know, I I, I couldn't. I didn't notice. Um, um, yeah. You know, it's funny is that we mentioned, like, what was it, last episode? Like, we kind of joked about Jean having fruit disguised as, um, yeah, yeah. Disguised as his oh, friends. Oh, yeah, it was basically that. It was basically that. It's like, oh, wow, this. <laughs> I mean, it's not exact, but it's close. It's close enough. I'm like, oh, geez, we unintentionally predicted that. Oops. Um. Uh... Yeah, and he's talking about how, like, oh, at some point that pebble tower is gonna collapse, destroy the dam. This whole place is gonna get flooded. We've but... got some time till that, so let's get some brunch. Which little's all for? Um. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> that was a real one. Um, yeah. And then we get to see a map that uh, Jean's been making of the Ever After. Uh, please, some of you guys have paused it to, like, look at it. I'm going uh, to yeah. now. I, I think I've looked at this before, but, um, but I'm going to pause it now. I, I love one of the ones in the center. Just Cake Acre. Caker. Caker. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell that Jean wrote that and was just giggling to himself. Like, hey. That is one I'm... thing I've got to say about this episode. I love all the little details, with, like the maps and things that Jean makes. Yeah. You it's know like... when Jean wrote that, he was just like, nice work, brain. <laughs> yeah. Him. Like a very Jean thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> Although I can't help but notice this, there's a Jabberwalker drawn on them. Uh, one of them, and it's right next to the paper pleaser uh, acre. Yeah. Um, okay. There's also volcano, Swan Lake, Stinky Cheese, Green Chapel. Weird. Blob. Just blob. Uh, farmland, a pyramid, and then all the places that we've been to so far. Yeah. And then in the middle of it is the giant tree. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, Jean's been, uh, 
John's been busy exploring. A little bit. Uh, I'm gonna let you take care of this one, mate. I have to go take care of something real fast. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the girls ask, all right, so do you have, like, any leads? Uh, yeah. That is his lead. Just, the girls keep the village safe. He rides Juniper around to find a way back. And that's all he's got. So we now know what his plan was from last episode. Yeah, and that's just uh, give the girls a to-do list. And uh... Okay, it's I kind of glossed I glossed over this, but I'm sorry. I was just going to say, like, the, the list, if you see the whole thing, it is, it is so good. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, Jean could have just been exploring, like, the whole time, but he can't just let the paper pleasers die. Yeah, because and... as he thinks they're just too clumsy. And, you know, given everything he's been through, this is just his coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. Because he needs... Because as we find out later, he needs to feel like he's actually able to save someone. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're going to get into it in a bit, but I also do want to just uh, talk about the list because I'm just out of the part where he pulls it out. Yeah, me too. All right, so there's... Um, uh, Brunch, say... exclamation mark, which is <laughs> yeah. one of my favorites. <laughs> uh, patrol the town, uh, stop the pebble tower from toppling, secure the dam... Save Ren from falling into Quay Pond. Hmm. Uh, watch out for terrible twos. Uh, keep away from Shredder. I think you need the Ninja Turtles for that, John. Yeah. Um, but hey, he's got Team Ruby now, so. Yeah, they're even better. Yeah. Uh, don't at me. Uh, uh, if any traveling salesmen or traders come through, check for hazardous goods. If you uh, wouldn't give it to a baby, don't <laughs> hyphenated give it to the paper pleasers. Uh, help with daily construction slash be uh, beautifully projects uh, so no one gets injured. Lunch. Uh, no more fried foods. Too much grease. <laughs> He's got to watch his figure. Uh, tea shop fiasco. Stop the second fire. Uh, save them from the uh, water from the second fire. Mm. Uh, check in a sandpaper knife shop. <laughs> Help break the sand. You'd be surprised how dangerous <laughs> how dangerous <laughs> rakes can be. Uh, keep Oscar away from anything uh, that can be used as kite string. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Oh, welcome uh, back. We're just going over the list. Stop the goose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the list. Okay. So let me. Repair uh... scarecrows in rice fields. If late, fight there. off giant crows and make new scarecrows. Ruby will help. <laughs> oh, that that one's actually really sweet. Like a little reference to crow. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even catch on to that. Yeah. yeah. Which is actually kind of funny because <laughs> both me and Brobuskus' favorite characters both got referenced for the first time in this episode. Oh no! Wait. Because the cat referenced Oscar earlier, so never mind then. I forgot about that. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. I keep forgetting your your favorite change to Oscar. Yeah. I was still thinking about Ironwood. I was like, wait, you got referenced last episode. I try not to think about Ironwood. Oof. Being off the subject. Um, <laughs> stop carts from uh, crashing into the marketplace. Uh, stop the coffee maker at the cafe before it explodes oh wow i am really slow i just watched i just i just saw one of them watch out for terrible twos good grief i am my brain is not working this weekend it uh, seems i just realized how that uh, spelled if it has closed paper doors before uh daily wind surge i think so stop uh, nora from crumbling the pebble tower uh during the storm Trust me, this one ends poorly. Frowny <laughs> face. <laughs> Take the scissors from Neptune. Uh, stop the bandits. 
Bandits in quotations, which is a little weird, but okay. Uh, stop the third and final, hopefully, fire. <laughs> hopefully? <laughs> I love how that's written. Uh, help Pura with her home with her homework, housework, whichever it is. It's probably smiley homework. Face. I don't know. The smiley face makes me sad. It's cute, but... Mm. Yeah. Stop the unfolding. Stop. <laughs> I'm you'll know brief. you'll know it when you see it. This is my first time I'm like really paying attention to this, so oh. take uh, away the makeshift lightning garage during the storm. Get the paper pleasers to bed. Final rounds. Find a way home. Uh he hasn't really been uh, uh, his as, day. Um he is done. Every day for like years at this point. Yeah. And uh, as we learn later, um, he hasn't exactly been doing a swell job of finding a way home. Um, and then we le and the fact that we learn the reason why, or at least we it's implied the reason why uh, later makes me uh, like at least seven layers of sad. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, this moment when uh, Jean is all like, I have to, like, uh, protect them, and he punches the table. Yeah, people have been drawing ironwood comparisons here. I don't blame them. This is, this is very similar. Um, hmm. It's always the beard that makes them evil. Always the beard. Hold on. And, uh, I'm trying to remember all the characters with beards. Yeah, take uh, this. As, take this as a PSA: Don't grow a beard. And I say that as someone yeah, with facial don't hair. Yeah, grow a beard, or you turn evil. <laughs> At least in the Ruby verse. True. No, that is that is one character I, that I know of immediately that has Gera. a beard and is not evil. Yeah, it's Gera. Oh, there you go. Gera is the exception. Um, yeah, this freaks everyone out. Even Little's like, oh, shoot, okay. Um, uh, yeah, as he's just going, I'm not crazy. This isn't crazy. I'm not crazy. Yeah, sure, Jean. We believe you, right? <laughs> yeah, and as he leaves, like, all right, I gotta go take some stuff. I'll just wait until you uh, meet Neptune and the rest of the clumsier ones. <laughs> and while all this to stay positive and go back to acting like how he used to, but they're very aware that this is a facade. And then there's Ruby, who is the exact opposite. Um, throughout this entire time, Ruby is looking away. She she's basically just not looking at Jean at all. Yeah, she's just not engaging in any of this. Um. Huh. Like, even as he's walking away, she, uh, not once does she uh, look up just to see him off. Uh, <sighs> this poor girl. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like, even Little is noticing. It's like, hey, Ruby, you okay? She doesn't... They don't say that, but they probably should have. Um. See, I saw this post on Twitter. It's just like, everyone in the Ever After is like, what are you? But no one ever asks, how are you? <laughs> yeah. I've also seen a lot of posts, and to an extent I agree with it, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know how much of what they're saying is, is either true or just um, like based on observation or just being, or just being hateful. Um, Little's basically the only one here who is, like, observant towards Ruby's mental state right here, because everyone else is talking about, like, Jean, Ruby's, yeah, Ruby's looking away all sad, and Little's the only one who's like, is she okay? Um, yeah, I mean, in the other girl's defense, they have tried. Oh, I know, Ruby, I know. But she just I know. Keeps Shutting um, the conversation down. Yeah, I, I know, but... Um, 
Well, like, all I'm saying is that a lot of this will come up again later. Um, yeah, yeah. I, we're probably going to get more in-depth in this as the episode goes on. Yeah. Um... But now Team Ruby are talking about uh, John's plan, or quote-unquote plan. Yeah. And how, you know, the tree is out of the question because it's death. Well, so we think. Um, yeah, because this paper pleaser is all, oh no, the tree doesn't kill, and we've actually tried to tell him that. Yeah. By the way, this paper pleaser is purple. First time we see him, they were bringing tea. Like, I'm kind of convinced this is the paper pleaser that he named Blake. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, as it turns out, you know, I kind of, I kind of figured this after last episode, um, but... Yeah, it turns out Jean hasn't really been telling us everything either. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, he's been through a lot. I understand that, but still. Um, yeah. It just brings it brings up the classic the classic question: Who can you trust? Because uh, the more these episodes have been going on, the less it's looking like the one we can trust is Jean. To be fair, though, I think, like, like as Weiss brings up, whether or not you consider the tree death really kind of depends on your own personal view. I yeah, mean, because, yeah, like, true. It, it's been described to us a couple times that it erases the memories of those it, like, ascends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that also borderline killing? Kind of. I mean, yeah, sure, you're reborn, but you have no memories of, like what you were before but there are people that believe that you know if you're if your soul even if you don't have your memory still exists then you don't truly die so yeah it's all and that's kind of the perspective the afterins have because i'm just going to say blake or like paper blake in this instance um says that they've you know they've lived for like all the paper pleasers have lived fulfilling lives but they they want to ascend. They want to, you know, grow into a new form because they've done really all they want to as they are. And yeah. the tree is their way of doing that. And they've tried to return to the tree in different ways, but John keep, uh, keeps on preventing them from doing so. And everything that they do in their routine isn't just them being clumsy, it's them trying to unalive themselves <laughs> this is this is a lot more morbid when you put it that way um yeah i mean that, that that's essentially what it is and that's why yeah. there's a warning at the beginning of this episode because it is like deep man like yeah um uh, it's kind of it's like actually this is actually kind of a theme throughout like the most of the ever after it's like everyone here is like their main goal is Hey, why don't we kill ourselves and grow well, into new lives? Um, oh, it's more so like, oh, we fulfilled our purpose. Yeah, I know, but... <laughs> now to reincarnate, basically. Yeah. Um, it's like, hey, we've lived our lives, we want to live new ones. But this... Uh, this giant knight over here, I mean, he's giant from their perspective, um, uh, he's kind of crazy, and he, and he won't let us. Uh, and it's not that they think that he's, like, evil or anything like no. that. No. like, he's, like, a, a tyrant. Like, they know that, that he just wants to help them, but he just doesn't understand um, their perspective and doesn't want to accept their choice, which... Which to, be to, which to be fair, how, which to be fair, how could you really like? Yeah, how, yeah, like for, based on like how most of us see would see it. Obviously, we'd probably think it's death and wouldn't want them to, yeah, to die. But that also relate. But with John specifically, that subject is, you know, it's a little sensitive very, for him. Yeah, yeah, considering Penny and how she wanted to also pass on in order to, for her to 
find a new purpose, which was to give the... to protect the maiden powers. Yeah. And how he let that happen before, but isn't willing to let that happen now. Yeah. Well, anyways, as Paper Blake uh, leaves, they kind of just reminisce on everything that they were just told, because it kind of it kind of goes against what they were thinking the entire time. Um, it's like at first they're like, "Oh, the tree is our portal; it's our way out." And then they learn it's like, "Oh no, the tree is actually death." Um, and then but here comes this little paper star, like and it's like, not be. "Yeah." So now it's like, yeah. "Well, what do we do now?" And Weiss calls out, "It's like, yeah, I don't know if we can trust John because John's kind of." Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um, and the second, the second she says that, guess who Why decides so to... dare you? <sighs> you knew guess my favorite just... cereal was Weetabix. <laughs> <laughs> like, guess who decides to bust in, like, the Kool-Aid man and say, like, hey, I heard that, and then leaves. <laughs> um... And it kind of brings up a very, uh, almost like existential question. It's like, what if, what if what we've been hearing from Curious was actually true for the most part? Um, yeah, because and, they also do mention that, well, yeah, they don't know what happened to Alex. No one knows. In fact, even the cat doesn't know. Yeah. You know, I wondered about about this after like you know curious gave his side of things last episode and i can imagine that a lot of that is probably like him lying but but i also had the thought in the back of my own, in the back of my mind it's like what if he was telling the truth about everything um i've also realized curious technically never lied yes yeah um, which, so, like I said last episode, if Curious was telling the truth, then, again, that really does call Jean's, uh, trustworthiness into question. Um, it does. although, although the I've way also I'm kind seen, of seeing it, oh, sorry. I've also seen people bring up, like, when Team Ruby was, like, telling, you know, stories about Remnant, they, they must have mentioned Jean at one point. Yeah, they must have. Why didn't... Curious, uh, just say, oh, yeah, I know Jean. Huh. Weird. Yeah, that that is a good point. Though I'm thinking at the same time, like, maybe it's just, like... That's just kind of, like... It doesn't... Br like, Cat doesn't bring up information unless it's, like... Asked directly. Yeah, asked directly or is wanting to ask a direct question. Mm. Yeah. So it's not that, like, it's being malicious, it's just... It's kind of like a computer program where it's like, it can only do so much. Well, they also probably didn't bring him up because they didn't feel like they had to. It's like, they're they're kind of enamored by Team Ruby's story, so it's like, yeah. I'm just going to pay attention to what they're saying. I don't care about what, what the full implications are. Um, yeah, because I already met John. And, yeah. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. Um, I imagine if um if Team Ruby did ask like, hey, you know, we Jean also fell down with us. Oh, no, actually, no, they they couldn't because they didn't they didn't know. All right, never mind. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I keep forgetting about that. Anyways. Um. Um. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Blake tries to say the look. We're listening to these people, not the cat, and they want to go, but Jean's all, no, they don't. They're too stupid to reali realize they anything. They don't know what they want. Then everyone what looks they want sad. Is bad for them. Yeah, really, really wonderful of you to bring, to say all that as they're all surrounding you, Jean. It's like, It'll be I get... very popular after that. Yeah, seriously. It's like, I get it. You're, you're not exactly right in the head. I get it. Um, and I understand this is kind of an emotional part for you, but, um, you know, maybe, maybe don't insult an entire race of people while they're surrounding you. Like, 
and they you know they kind of considered you their hero so yeah maybe not the best call um yeah and he's just he feels like he can actually do something and protect people and then his house gets destroyed yep you know th this this world is full of convenient timing isn't it um First John yeah, coming in while Weiss calls him crazy, and then this. Like... Yeah. And what destroyed his house? It's Jabba Neo. Walkers. Yep, Neo's army of Jabberwalkers. Yeah, a Jabberwalker destroyed his house along with another Jabberwalker, and another Jabberwalker, and another Jabberwalker. I was wondering how long you were going to get back uh, <laughs> to go. And then John's basically like, all right, to battle. Um, and everyone follows him, except Ruby. <laughs> have you noticed the theme yet? I don't think, I don't think you could have. Um, um, but Ruby relents. She goes. Um, and we get an action scene. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sick. You know, um, nice to see the Armageddon again. I been, been a hot minute. Um, and now we got to probably my uh, favorite scene in the episode. Yeah, I, I wonder why. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's just Blake and Yang fighting in perfect sync. It's look, it's just always awesome to see. And like uh, now that they're like a full on couple now, it's just like power couple right here. Yeah. Um, also, I gotta say, John fights very well with a broken sword. I know, right? Hmm. Um, I also got to want to point this out as we get um, near the end, um, where like obviously, like after um, John loses his sword and Weiss throws it back to him, his mm -hmm. shield lights up faintly as the gravity sends the shield flying to take out the last Jabberwalker. So his yeah. shield after like 30 years still works despite hmm. being rusted so you know that's interesting yeah i have also noticed that like some stuff that happens with weiss is also a bit more on the comedic side like oh uh, again some flying and just like losing a bit of balance on a gravity glyph mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah like we need some comedy here yeah, but it's just, I, I've just noticed it's always Weiss this season, yeah. in particular. Well, yeah. Yeah, it, it is a bit mm. weird that it's always always Weiss, but in fairness, like, the other real, like, options are Ruby and, and John, who are both, like, hella depressed. And Yeah, notice how throughout this entire ordeal we haven't like, mentioned yeah. Ruby once until now. Um... That's because she's just kind of sitting there in the background. Um, yeah, which Jean notices, and uh, he's also a little bit mad. And I mean, I can't blame him, but at the same time, uh, I mean, Ruby's kind of suffering a panic attack. Yay. I mean, and hey. And what else is going on? A Jabberwalker attacks her from behind. Yeah, I mean, I mean, hey, you know, she works up some degree of courage to get into sniper mode. So there's that. But then the Jabberwalker's face changes. Okay, okay. Uh, oh like, boy. The Jabberwalker itself doesn't change. I think this is just Ruby having like a PTSD uh, yeah. episode. But it did, because we see later that the Jabberwalker can change back into the Neo clone. So I was assuming that that was like, like oh, a psychological true. thing. Like, I well, might be wrong. It could be either or. Like, I... Yeah, no, I think this is just Ruby, like, uh, freaking out. I mean, it morphs into Cinder fully, which that's that's Ruby's PTSD for sure. Um, oh, yeah, but, like, when the face changes, I thought that yeah, was, yeah, like, yeah. Neo. But, like, I, I might be wrong with that. Yeah. And then it shifts into Penny, because, you know, of course it does! Um... And... After pinning Ruby down, Salem, and hey, there's that final trailer shot. Yeah, finally. Um, it only took them seven episodes. Um, 
And yeah, Ruby's, and... Ruby's oh, basically this... off of the count now. And then it just straight up bursts its mouth open. Because, you know, it can just do that, apparently. Um, Which is horrifying. Yeah. yeah uh... And but then in... before it yep. can do anything, uh, here come the rest of Team Ruby to uh, basically just take it out. Yep. And then we get something that I don't think we've ever seen before. Uh, Yang's Ember Silica morphs back into their regular forms. I don't think we've ever seen the transition back. Um, I saw someone make a gif of it and they like, uh, slow it down a little. It's actually really cool how many pieces of the arm move. Yeah. Um. Well, anyway, so they won. Oh. Yay. Yeah, um, but then the Jabberwocker, like, uh, shifts into Neo, who does a finger gun to Ruby, like, I'm gonna get you. And yeah, then shatters. a dramatic pose, then finger guns, then, then like, shatters into pieces. I could just kind of imagine, like, back at, like, the like the Java Walker lands, Neo just, like, practicing the pose, like, oh, yeah, <laughs> then I'm gonna do this, and then it's gonna be really intimidating. <laughs> um. So, yeah, Yang yeah, basically... Yeah, the girls are like, how the hell is she got so powerful? Huh, weird. I, I, I'm getting a sense of deja vu here. Um. It's almost like we've said this before. Hmm. Nah, I'm probably just thinking too deep into it. Um. Uh, so anyway, Jean comes in and is uh. He's not happy. Um. Yeah, and uh. Oh god, what gets said here? It's just like. Like he picks up Crescent Rose and is all. Look, I understand if you don't want to protect the village, sure, but at least help your friends. And he's about to get into a screaming match with her. Like... Yeah. As he picks up Crescent Rose, tries to hand it to her, and then she backs away as it falls to the floor. And that's kind of when uh, all of them realize, oh shit, something's wrong with Ruby. Yeah. Yeah, well... Like, even even on John's yeah, face, he's like, he's like, uh, did I do something wrong? Um... um <laughs> and then Yang's the and... one that calls out. It's like, hey, are you okay? Yeah, no, Yang is the one to call it out, but before anything can come from that, remember that pebble tower? Bet you don't. Well, it's here now, and it's toppled over, and the dam broke, and the, st and the city is flooded, much to Jean's dismay. Yeah, remember his coping mechanism? That's oh. gone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then all of Team Ruby, well, I mean, except for Ruby, um... Go to Jean to comfort him. It's like, hey, it's okay. Um, and you're going to want to remember that it was all of them for later, by the way. Um, just just thought I'd bring that up. Um, um, but yeah, Jean's I basically like... Comfort him. Yeah. Basically, yeah, they're basically like, hey, look, it's okay. You know, this is what they wanted. You know, they... They're not gone, but they... Well, they're, they're gone, but they're not dead. Um, um, and then Weiss, oh, bless her heart, she probably makes one of the worst mistakes of her life in this particular moment. Um, um, basically saying, um, it's like, yeah, this is what they wanted. Right, Ruby? <sighs> Weiss... Weiss, look, I I appreciate what you're trying to do, but <laughs> uh, as you will as we'll later see, like I said, probably one of the worst mistakes she's ever made. Um, yeah. Um. Because Ruby goes, why are you asking me? Yep. And uh, uh, hey, so you remember throughout like the entirety of this volume, we've been predicting that Ruby's going to reach her breaking point and snap at her teammates, and it's something that I said I was all for. Well, we and, got it! Uh, I also believe people have been speculating that this would happen for a long-ass time now. 
Yep. Yep. I'm trying to remember. Did we predict episode seven was when it was going to happen? I think we did. I mean, we did last week, but that's because yeah, and we, I we, like, we and I predicted that with Max. Yeah, that's but it's also because we knew that they were hyping up seven, and yeah, yeah, we got it's like there were I think there were there were two scenes that everyone was like expecting slash hoping um, to happen in this volume. One was the bee kiss, which we got, and the other mm-hmm. is this. Yeah, and. Uh, kind of important that the beak has happened first. Uh, we'll get into yep. that. Um. And look, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get like emotional and all that stuff, but uh, let me just state for the record that from a from a pure writing and uh, presentation perspective, this scene is fantastic. Um. Oh yeah. Hmm. Um. It's like. We all expected a Ruby breaking moment, you know, a breakdown, a uh, a shouting scene, basically, and then we have it. And I think it's basically everything we've been predicting. Slash, but, uh, part of part of me was kind of, in fact, actually, you know what? Part of me was kind of hoping that she'd bring some of this up, not from like a like a like, you know, obviously a lot of it could be seen as unjustified and. To an extent, it is. Um, but, you know, this is something that she... All of what she's about to say is probably something she needed to Just get, get off out. her chest. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, basically she's like, what? Just because I'm the leader, that means uh, I need to have a plan. I need to have a plan of attack. I need to have something to say. Well, I, I don't. shoulder everything yeah well i don't have something to say you happy now like is this what you wanted to hear no i have nothing um i have no plan i have no pep talk i am suffering i don't think and i i I don't think you guys realize how much i'm suffering (laughs) um but it's not about me it's always about uh it's always about getting home about helping john or, or oh, as she puts it, I, that one, but... I didn't realize that's what you were doing. Oh, okay, my bad. As, as Ruby puts it, um, trying to find someone that doesn't screw everything up. Uh... <laughs> um, yeah, then she I approaches get... uh, Blake and Yang, and Yang does take a step in front of Blake. And I've seen people uh, question this, honestly. I don't blame Yang for doing that. No, I don't either. Um, I mean, probably wasn't a great idea, you know, uh, especially in Ruby's mindset. Um, but this whole scene, I had I had a chance to think about this last night, and I'm going to bring this up here, is that basically everybody in this scene is acting on... Well, part of it is emotion, and the other part of it is instinct. And while both of them are fine and realistic... Um, it does lead to some pretty interesting mistakes. Um, um, Yang, yeah, Ruby's Yang jumping and shouting in... like, uh, "Gotta stay positive. Uh, uh, maybe we should get our feelings out." Good for you, by the way. We're all so happy for you. Yeah, um... and just want to throw this out there: No, Ruby is not being a homophobe. Which no. I've seen a lot of memes about, and a lot of stuff like Jinx from Arcane. But like, I mean, neither of those characters are homophobic. Probably, I mean, it's that's probably just memeing. Like, it's they're prob- yeah. that's probably yeah, nothing. It is just memeing, but but that there I have I I have seen some legitimate claims about that, and no, um, um, heck, actually, Ruby no, the black, there's a there's a Ruby scene with the black sun shipper. <laughs> no, there's a oh, scene. God. In, there's a scene in volume six when you know she's trying to comfort Blake after everything they've been through. Um, yeah, no, she's she, known that they had mutual romantic interest in each other for a while. Yeah, yeah. and she was all and uh, not once was she like, "Yo, you gotta stop. The, you gotta stop that." Um, until now, but that's because she's kind of losing her mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's basically because like uh, Max and I talked about this like in the episode where the beak has happened. The 
part of the reason why that happened first is so that Ruby could, like, basically have justified reason for snapping at them too, and yeah. that being that she's going through all this, and they're basically treating the Ever After like it's a romantic like it's a honeymoon away or something. Yeah. Look, it's, I'm. It's look, also kind of like, I'm, like they're getting to be happy while I'm miserable. Yeah. Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say all this right now. I don't blame Ruby for any word she said throughout this entire ordeal. Um, um, I don't either, but I'm also uh, like, you know, go like I'm just, like, like like I don't agree with it, and yeah, I want her to chill, but at the same time, it's like it's understandable, is the thing. yeah, it's understandable. It's not, like, like the intention of the scene is not to be like, damn, Ruby spitting facts. The intention no. of the scene is Ruby is having a mental breakdown at the moment. Yeah. And is, like, getting all this, like, raw emotion out and getting a lot of stuff off of her chest. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's like, obviously she's not right, but... She's not also wrong not wrong. Either. She's not yeah. wrong, yeah. Like, you yeah, it's... She... I, I say that about the other side, and this is how you write a uh, good conflict, uh, whatnot, between characters. No one is in the right, no one is in the wrong. Exactly. Um, and I kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the episode, and I'm going to bring it back here. Um, um, it's, uh, it's Weiss's remark. Um, I'm going to bring this back here. Um, uh, I mentioned it in a previous episode that I don't think, well, I think they're, they're trying. I don't think Weiss, Blake, or Yang are handling this very well. Like, she, they, they... I'm trying. I'm trying to word this in a way that doesn't that doesn't make them sound like bad people. Um, but um, Ruby's going through a lot. Not all all of them are. I understand that, but it seems like Ruby especially is kind of on the verge of losing her mind. Um, um, so when I hear when when I see them like like in chapter five, let's look at chapter five. Like them basically going with Curious instead of going with Ruby. From a narrative perspective, makes total sense. We wouldn't, the scene with the blacksmith wouldn't have worked otherwise. Um, uh, from a character's perspective, like, one of you couldn't have stayed behind. Um, um, and then, you know, later after that, you got Weiss's remark, uh, like, you know, after Ruby's like, oh, sorry, I didn't get the nose hair. And Weiss is like, oh, Ruby, really? Um, I'm like, hey, look. I don't know. Um, and then she does it again this episode, and I'm like, it's, it's kind of proving my point. It's like, I don't think they're doing a particularly good job of watching after her. They're trying, yeah, but... Mean, um, it's, not I'm, I'm going... it's not for lack of trying. I think it's just because, like, obviously this is a very difficult situation yeah. uh, for everybody. And it's kind of like... They're also... There's not, there's not, like, a correct way to approach this, I guess, because... no. Like, it's I can also every person, every also person. yeah. And in defense of like the nose hair thing, I'll just say they were six inches tall at the time. I know. Um, so like but... getting them back to normal was a pretty big priority. I know. Um, so I mean, and yeah, yeah. There are other instances under... where like they have tried to talk to Ruby, but she just like either walks away or just shuts the conversation down. Which yeah, I think, like I like, like yeah, I said, kind of they're... like like maybe we're like overreacting. Like she's saying she's fine. They're getting distracted with like bigger stuff. Uh, well, not bigger stuff because that kind of like invalidates Ruby's feelings. But like you know what I right. mean. Like other stuff is happening that is getting their attention too. Um, mm -hmm. And also, there's like Ruby, despite like to us the audience is like oh yeah, very obviously struggling. So like I think the characters as well. Um, they're just like so used to Ruby being, like yeah. fine and. I mean, and they stuff knew. That they're not really. I mean, picking off on it as as much. I mean, they knew something was wrong. Um, like, Yang's constant asking, like, "Hey, you okay?" And there was that scene in at the end of chapter two, like Ruby. Ruby says, "Like, we need to stop pretending what we're doing." All of all of her teammates are looking at at each other, like, "Is she okay?" Um, yeah, but then you need to think of like scenes after that where like Ruby like cheery when they're like having the fight with a chessboard and stuff like true uh, like because i think the thing is yeah like they realize it more with john and they're pursuing it more because john is like 
99% of the time is like showing he is mentally struggling whereas Ruby is doing a bit of a better job of bottling it up and not mm -hmm. showing it cuz like they are like mate was saying they are still like checking in on her and she's just saying like I'm fine and like they're probably just thinking oh okay she's just stressed or something it's not too bad cuz she's right. not showing like active, as much active signs of being in pain because it is like with you know depression and with um stuff like that you know it, you can hide it like very well like sometimes people don't even know and it's not that they don't know it's just the fact that they think it's not as bad as it actually is because of all their stuff happening not obvious signs and also some moments where ruby is like cheery and not depressed you know yeah yeah, I get that. Um, and again, like I said, like bless their heart, they're trying. Yeah, they are, good point, um, yeah, they are but, trying. Um, but my mind goes back to what um, what Weiss said when Ruby told her, like, you know, you did everything that you could. Um, now, to be fair, in that context, you know, it was Weiss kind of beating herself up. But in this context, it's actually kind of true. Um, in that, mm -hmm. yeah, they're trying their best. They tried their best, but it clearly wasn't enough. Um, it's like their best doesn't equal good, um, um, and for for as much as they've been trying, I don't think they're doing a good job. Um, yeah, and um, I think that that's something they've realized in this moment, and something that's going to change in future yeah. episodes. And like, as well, everything with like Ruby, I can understand her feeling like, oh, it's like people aren't validating my theory, like feelings. Yeah. Because like every time that it does get brought up in this volume, where someone's like, Ruby, are you okay? immediately afterwards something happens or someone's like oh we got to focus on getting home so yeah. to her it feels like her feelings are being like devalued compared to helping john or getting home and yeah like this like doesn't... like and like right here doesn't matter like yeah. like right here like every, like yang asks like hey you okay and then immediately after this entire village gets flooded and all of a sudden yeah. all all of their attention is on john which yeah, ex from their perspective, exactly. which is understandable, but from Ruby's perspective, it's like, oh, okay. Now all of a sudden you don't care. Um, yeah, like I, I had a, I had a PTS, I had like a panic attack essentially, and then you go over to John instead of me is like how she's seen. Yeah, it, which obviously it's more complex than that, but like from her perspective, it makes sense because yeah. Like, once again, it feels like to her that her feelings and well-being is being devalued compared to others uh, because she's got high expectations and um, shouldn't be feeling this way. And we yeah. even see that a bit in this episode as well because, like, if you... I brought this up earlier with, like, um, the, on John's list, how it says Ruby will help. Like, it's expected that Ruby will oh, help. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, you're right. Um, because that's how people see Ruby, and in this episode, John's like, "You're not acting how you should be," you know. You're not fighting. You're, you're, you know, standing around. You're letting your teammates uh, do everything. That's not what you're supposed to do. Because he has predetermined expectations. Yeah. Um, Which doesn't help in the situation. No. Um, and speaking of. Something John does or doesn't help in this situation. Well, before that, um, Ruby points out, like, it's like, oh, is this a bad time? Oh, right. Sorry, I forgot. We need to mourn Jean's, and I quote, make believe friends. Oh, Which, boy. Um, yeah. Um, I okay. Think people well, also point out that Alex uh, believed that this world was just make believe. Yeah. And, you know, she changed after the herbalist. Yeah. And, you know... Parallels, Ruby... aren't they fun? Yeah. Um, okay, I do want to defend what Ruby says here um, before we get to the other part of this scene that's equally as big. Um, um, so... Obviously, what she, obviously what she said was out of line. Like, don't like. Let me let me make that clear. Um, but I think from from her perspective, they're sitting here and they're mourning the Afterins, which wanted to die. Well, you know, quote unquote, die. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, they wanted um, this to happen to them. Yeah, but they're not. 
But what they're not doing is that they're mourning their actual friends. Um, they've never taken the time to sit back and mourn everyone they've lost. Um, uh, it's like, from Ruby's perspective, Penny died yesterday. Yeah. And at no point did she have time to sit down and think about that um, and process that. Meanwhile, Jean has had, uh, like, at least 30 years. I don't know. Random number. Um, but he's had decades. Yeah. To get like, up to process it compared to her. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's had all this time. And what does he do? He names a bunch of paper people after all of uh, all of their friends and people they know. Which yeah. probably includes Penny. Probably. I mean, Pira was among them, so... Makes sense. Um, but it's Ruby's uh, outburst here that causes Jean to step in. Um, now, I'll be honest, you know, thinking about it now, it's like with, with the benefit of hindsight, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess it's kind of obvious we should have gotten this, huh? Um, mm -hmm. But bef before this, I, I would not have called this happening. Um, so Jean basically says, it's like, that, you know, the Afterans here are dead because of you. Um, the Jabberwockers came because of you, because Neo hates you. Um, what about uh, you? It's always been about you. Yeah. Um, and... It was your, your plan that got us stuck here in the first place. Yeah, it was your plan that caused the loss of our friends, um, and got us stuck here... It got me stuck here for decades. Um, it's like, yeah. You know, I didn't even think about this until I thought about this more last night. Um, I mentioned in, um, I believe it was after Chapter 4. I believe. Um, I said that I wanted someone to tell her that it was not all about her. Because she thinks that it was. Um, and what we got here was on one hand it's the exact opposite of what I was uh, what I was hoping for but on the other hand it works literally for the exact same reason um, um, but you know hmm you know Ruby's kind of already blaming herself for th for that failure you know mm -hmm. Jean's outburst here as you can imagine doesn't help um yeah. But, as soon as Weiss calls him out, Jean immediately realizes, oh, shoot, I messed up. Um, yeah. Which, yeah. you know, good for him. And also good for him, he does acknowledge that, yeah, I am not okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, on one hand, like, he acknowledged it, but at the same time, acknowledging it and dealing doesn't with it mean that are two different things. he is okay. No, he's not. Uh, he is absolutely not okay. Um, yeah, no, no, that's what I'm getting at. But, Admitting um, he's not okay doesn't make him okay. Yeah, but it's it's process. It's progress. Um, it's, it's something. something. The bare minimum. Yeah. Um, and John basically, oh boy. Um, um, he talks about how he has to like live with it, like either here or home, like. What happened here, or what happened on the bridge? And, uh... I'll be honest, at this point, I was actually expecting him to mention, uh, what happened. Yeah. I mean, he does in all but name. Yeah, uh... I mean, uh, like, okay. I'm the only one that could do this. I was the, I was the one that had to do this. I'm starting to feel like... We, I'm starting to feel like they were told all about that off screen. Um, I know, and I don't want it to be the case. Um, because there's no way, like, I could see Jean being oblivious to the idea of Ruby and the others not knowing. Um, you know, obviously, except for Wyatt, she knew, but um, but that's not important. That's not my point. Um, I'm going I, off of the assumption that. Uh, Jean assumes that Weiss already said something. Me too. I mean, yeah, that's possible, but... 
I don't know. I feel like it's a little. I I find it kind of hard to believe that. Um, that like slip of the tongue wouldn't happen at least at this point. It's been how long? I know it's only been like mm-hmm. a day, but if you assume that you've that your friends have already like that that Weiss already told them what happened, you I feel like just kind of nonchalantly bringing it up, you know, assuming that they already knew would have happened by now, but either it happened off screen or it doesn't uh, or it hasn't happened yet, and if it hasn't happened yet, I have to ask how. Um nah. uh. But anyways, so, Blake does try to defuse the situation, but Ruby's just not having Ruby. any of it and just Honestly, says just don't. I I don't blame her. I like I get I get the whole things like hey, like I know the situation's bad, but be positive, you know. It's that just that doesn't work, um, uh, especially when people who are going through this much. Um, I, uh, like I said, it's out of line, but I don't blame her for. Okay, we kind of danced around it. She basically tells Blake to shut up. Um, yeah. Um, that did not feel good on my end. No, I, I can imagine why. But at the same time, again, it's out of line, but I don't blame her for saying it. Yeah, let's... Um, Well, you know, like, in one of the remaining episodes, like, when when the the group does get back together, they're going to, like, talk this out, and, like, one of the first things that Ruby's going to do is apologize, then the group is going to apologize. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um. Everybody yeah, was just like, going through I, some stuff and had to let some stuff out, and this might sound a little weird for me to say, but at least they're doing this in a world where Grim aren't around. No, that's actually yeah. a, I I didn't even think about that until I saw a Twitter post that said the exact same thing, um, and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess this is for the better. Oh lord, that that just makes me sad. Um, um. But, um, yeah, so then Ruby, she turns she turns around, she picks up Chris and Rose, which is all kinds of concerning, uh, and leaves. And that is where we leave off the episode. <sighs> um, I think we all need a minute to process this. Um, oh, uh, hang on. Uh, go, go on without me for a sec. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was that was that was something. Yeah. That. I, I do think it's good, like we were saying before, that now this is like you know the band aid has been ripped off. Well, honestly, I've seen a few Twitter posts that might agree with me on this. I'm I'm wondering if this is it. Um. Um. I, I don't think it should be, in my opinion. Like I, like I feel like they should talk about it a bit more, and then they can get to the whole like rebuilding. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like there's still a lot more Ruby needs to get off her chest, but she just couldn't. Um, and I don't know. Maybe she could have had Jean not interrupted, but yeah. Um, but at the same, I mean, I don't. I don't blame Jean either. I don't blame anybody for anything that happened here. Um, but I'm back. Yeah, Hello. Like, like um, no one in here was was in the wrong. Like, uh, this has all been like built up to for like a long time. Yeah. Like, this needed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, like I said, I wonder if this is. I, I'm wondering. So I'm doubting that this is it for Ruby's mental breakdown. Um. Uh, I think she still has a lot more she needs to get off her chest. Um. Um, and I, am, and I, I am expecting either the the blacksmith to reappear next episode, or the, or a thunderstorm. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And um, there's also like the inevitable like confrontation with Neo. Yeah. Uh, um. 
And uh, well, I've been so, speculating about this as well, but there are some scenes in this episode that do make me think it's absolutely happening. And it's the uh, okay. So uh, when the team were trying to confront uh, comfort Jean, I noticed that you know Blake was like right there with him, and when they were running to the village, Blake was in the lead. Mm -hmm. Blake was also the one who was like, all right, we'll go help uh, Jean with the Jabberwalkers. Yeah. I feel like as they are now, Blake's going to take over as leader. Probably. Um, Team Juby. <laughs> well, we'd have to that start sounds, with B. That sounds weird. Um, I know um, it, it does, but like that... Well, that's what I've heard people been been saying. But yeah. would start with a B if it was Blake as a leader, but... Um, uh, that on the spot, so. You know what? I'm only thinking about this because there's a W and a Y in there. Would Team Berry work? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I guess. Um, so, does anybody else find it um, concerning and interesting that before Ruby zips off, she picks up her weapon? Something that yeah. she kind of backed away from when it was handed to her? Anyone else find that a little odd? Um, anyone else find that a little concerning? Don't worry about it. Um, uh, I, I part of me wonders if if uh, Ruby's gonna gun for Neo. I was thinking that honestly. Yeah. Because which if that's which if that's the case, hey Ruby, Ruby's that's that's, to that's make a the connection of like okay, Neo can turn. I can make, like, duplicates to turn into the Jabberwalker. I know where the Jabberwalker is because of John's map. Yeah. I'm sick of, I'm sick of Neo. Uh, gonna go and commit myself a murder. I, I mean, you can try, but that's, that's a suicide mission waiting to happen. Um, uh, oh. I mean, she's also not alone. She has Lissa with her. At least that's something. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think Little's going to help her much in a fight. Um, no, no, not hey, in a fight. You, I just mean with, like... You say that like... now, but just you wait. The, Little's going to get the final <laughs> hit on the <laughs> Watch, Little's um, going to climb up to her throat and just, like, kind of bite her in the jugular or something. See, my thought is... I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe she is going after Neo, but... My thought was, like, I don't know, maybe next episode opens up with her crying in a forest. Yeah, like, I'm up thinking... Up against a tree. Could yeah, she's gonna... Though. She's gonna have, like, her... Her head and, like, her knees and just yeah. cry. Like, just yeah. let it all out. Mm -hmm. I mean, in that sense, like, hey, at least she's got little with her. So there's that. Um... Yeah, that's what I was getting at when I brought up Whistle. But, um... Mm -hmm. I kind of want to see Lido get the final hit on Neo now. I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> of all characters, to, happen, of all characters to do it. Um. But um, yeah. <sighs> I'm concerned. We all are. Yeah, it's. God, the wait for next episode is a killer. Yeah. Though I think my personal way for episode 6 was a killer just because of how much crew B were hyping that one up. Yeah. True. I was saying this before we're recording, but it feels weird that, like, every episode so far, like, I don't know if it's just me, but it's like, oh, this is my new favorite episode in the volume. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, okay, look, I'll say this much. Um. Yeah, last episode I said that um, Barbara and Aaron deserve beers. Um, uh, Miles and Lindsay deserve a whole bar. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they did so Miles did and Lindsay did such a good job for this episode. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm tempted to say that Miles was, like, voice acting MVP of the show. Of this uh, episode, I mean. Because... Um, just the the raw emotion that he put in to the 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 argument was 
just insane. Um, I mean, that's that's no slouch on Lindsay either, but um, but yeah, jeez, like these two are are insane. Um, but uh, also, I, I want to bring this up as well. Um, because I know earlier you were mentioning about John not being trustworthy. Uh -huh. Um, or like, like, because look at this. Like, if you go back to where we see like the storyboard, or, like, the the fairy tale art of like John with the paper pleasers. Uh huh. He looks a lot younger. Yeah, so he's been yeah. at this for a long time. Yeah, but like he looked younger. Because he met the paper pleasers after he got poisoned by Alex. Yeah. But he looked a lot younger. Oh, when he you're met right. Him to... Yeah, he looks a lot younger when he first, when like he's like taking care of the paper pleasers, than he does when he gets when he's like with Alex. Hmm. Huh. Also, um, there's that shot in episode six when we see him older, like looking up and seeing Alex and Lewis fall, it's the exact same model as, like, we see now. So there's a slight inconsistency there, I've noticed. Yeah. Which I don't know if that's intentional uh, or not. No, it's absolutely not. Yeah, it's probably just a goof. Yeah, it's uh, probably okay. just because they couldn't be asked to make a whole nother Jean model for just that one scene. Which obviously makes sense. I just, like, I, I thought it would be interesting to bring up because, like, maybe it was intentional. Because, like, we also don't... Like, Juniper apparently brought John to the Vapor Blazers, but we didn't see Juniper in the hole. Um, also, here's, here's an idea. Board maybe board he's back. shaped. I guess so, maybe. I just... I thought it was an interesting idea. Like, maybe John, you know, memory's a bit wonky, and that's, like, they were putting that in the, the flashbacks as well, but... Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Um... What I find interesting, I didn't bring it up then, I'll bring it up now because screw it. Um, yeah, he said that Juniper brought him here. Um, and like like Aiden said, we didn't see Juniper at all throughout those uh, those flashbacks in Chapter 6. But, you know, my my thought process, and I guess I, I, guess I was wrong, uh, my thought process was that Curious brought him, like he, he basically revived him. Because um, we see Curious at the very end of Jean's story, so mm. I thought maybe Plot he was twist. the one who uh, brought him back, but I Plot guess twist. I... Juniper is the curious cat. <laughs> that doesn't really work, because we've seen Juniper and the curious cat in the same scene. I know, I just wanted to make the joke. That would, that would be a twist, though. Um, um, but, uh, yeah. So... I don't really know what more I can say on the matter. Um, that was a... Uh... This is a heavy episode. Um, um, definitely left me with a lot to process. I, I, um, I actually had to take a moment to, like, sit there in silence. Just, like... Yeah, I did the same thing. Take, taking in everything I had just watched. Um... I suddenly miss the post of episode six where I was so happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, I knew it was coming, but still. Yeah. Yeah, we all did. And to, to be fair, it's, it is good ish that, you know, we got this, that they got this off their chest. Um, yeah. Like it's happened. So now we can like focus on, you know, healing yeah mm -hmm. um you know and i i do hope maybe we'll get it like you know the end of the volume or something when all of this is like blown over um like ruby will like go to blake and yang and be like hey look i know i said you know that but i am genuinely happy for you um 
Uh, because I, I, I know she is. Like, she's just... Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on right now. Um, and I can understand her frustrations. Like, hey, I'm, he- I'm over here suffering a panic attack, and you two are treating this like a honeymoon. It's like, what, what the heck, guys? I understand that. Um, and like we said, that's not... Okay. Uh, uh, again, it's out of line. This is going to be a theme with this... This is a theme with this episode. It's out of line, but it's not wrong. Um, um, and obviously, I am over the moon for, uh, for Blake and Yang. I'm so happy for them. But mm. I also completely get, it's like, why are you guys treating this like a getaway, like a vacation, when... Ruby is like breaking down, basically. Um, and Ruby didn't even see like the fairy tale environment they had to kiss up. Yeah, that's that like prom- Le- that's like life is a- like honeymoon, like fantasy kiss. Life is like a fairy I mean, yeah. tale, my butt. <laughs> um, it's like that's yeah. Um. Actually, I don't, you know, actually, you know, now that I think about it, I feel like Ruby seeing that that sort of scenery would probably make things worse. Um, probably. So, in, uh, in, in hindsight, it's probably better that she didn't. Um, hmm. But um, yeah. So, I mean, I doubt things will be like all the way back to good next episode but yeah it's probably gonna be till uh, the end of the volume when yeah we get there. yeah i imagine there's probably gonna be a bit more of a screaming match next episode um maybe not a screaming match but just like yeah i don't know like i said ruby's got a lot more she needs to get off her chest like this girl has been bottling up stuff since the fall of beacon which is a lot of to bottle up. Um, mm. um, and need I remind everybody involved, this girl is 17. When we get back to Remnant, someone get this girl a therapist. I know, right? It's like... Uh, um, End of the series. It's like, okay, we defeated Salem. Now we can all get therapy. <laughs> yeah. My gosh, they'll need it. Um, um, I guess you know. I guess to end things off on a slightly better note, um, and I do mean slightly. Um, I'm not as confident on uh, Jean staying here or ascending anymore. Um, I, I still feel like it's more likely than it, than not, but. Yeah, I guess now that we have some, like, potential new implications of the tree, you know, I guess it's not impossible that he can go back. Like, I, like I thought I thought before, I was like, okay, yeah, no, he is, there is no way he's getting out of this. Um, yeah, but at the same time, because we still don't know what happened to Alex and Lewis. Right, no, I know. I, I'm still... What if- if there was a sacrifice that had to be done to get someone back to Remnant, what if Jean tries that? Yeah. So that he can get, like, the goals back? Yeah. And, I mean, hey, it, it fit with his character. You know, he wants to save people. He gets to save his friends. I, he wanted to... I had a fault. Go ahead. So, we know that John. Um, the John crashed in the Forever After, right? And yeah. he did it supposedly after Team Ruby, originally, when he first came here. Yeah. T- what we, well, I could see being an out, um, a way to have John um, return with everyone, but also having, um, you know, old John's arc matter, is there's two John's. Do tell. Because time, tra- time travel. Oh. Hmm. I don't know no, about that. No, but like, now that we've caught up, 
like that Jean would have already picked the fruit and gone back in time. Maybe, but I could see them do like going back and stopping that or something. I don't know. I'm just saying that could be a possible way for there to be, you know, like John still in the story, but also have a have like this conclusion for like old John's arc. I guess, right. but at the same time, wouldn't old John like not want to stop that because then wouldn't that like Marty McFly him have existence? I guess, but we don't really have like like solid time travel rules for Ruby. Hmm. I just thought it was it's interesting to bring up because, like we we were saying this like last last time, it's like now that time travel is like in Ruby, there's like questions or at least time right. travel in the Forever After. Hmm. You know, and I'm just and I'm just saying like if they wanted to still have John in the story, um, they that is a way they could do that because that John would still have the development of killing Penny and going through all of that. It's just now he's able to get the help sooner. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking about like this, like young John. I guess. You know, I just had an unrelated thought. Um, and it, it kind of just came to my mind because I think I I saw a, a Twitter post about this. Um, and this doesn't have anything to do with what happened in this episode. I'm just kind of thinking like for the future. Um. Um. <sighs> When when they do get out, where are they gonna go? Like, where do they where do they end up? Cause like I guess we we all assumed it would be vacuo, but we don't really have a basis for that. I still remember I had my thought of the ever after just being the world in the vaults and just being okay. Like, but what if that's not true? Like, yeah, I'm still thinking if that's not true, I. So like, are they gonna are they gonna are they gonna end up in like random spots? Uh, like, obviously, uh, I mean, they're gonna go back to Remnant. Obviously, we got I got that, but it might just be like the Atlas Wasteland, like the remains of the city of Atlas. What they just to which what? they and they go picked up by Crow and the Aesops, who are exactly. still there. I mean, that would be nice, but um, like what they just uh, they they respawn in the water, um. Well, because I'm just thinking, that's where they came from. Like, I don't, I, like, do you get to pick? Like, the tree's like, all right, where'd you want me to drop you? I mean, yeah, I, mean, I guess, like, if that's the case, I'm like, obviously, like, they think, oh, well, it'll take us to Vacuo, you know, and then, you know, easy peasy. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I never really stopped, and, I never really stopped and thought, it's like, are they just going to send them to, like, a random spot on Remnant? Like... Why if they all get sent to different places? Oh man, then we're gonna have to. Then we're gonna have a separation arc again. That is volume. That is volume four all over again. I I feel like they won't do that. Um, no, nah, probably not. But Neither but I also I, but I think it would be interesting. I mean, it would be, but at the same time, I'm also thinking like, wait, the tree. I don't think the tree would specifically pick Vacuo. I guess they probably would. I guess they probably would. Send them to Atlas, or what's left of it anyway. Um, yeah, because I'm thinking, I don't think the tree, because if I know the tree is connected to Remnant, or like that's what we're assuming because the tree right. is the supposed way home. But we, so we know the tree is connected to Remnant, but like, I think it's only, I don't know, like, we still don't know where Alex, like how Alex and Lewis got to the Forever After. To begin with, like if there's that's like a, yeah. what I'm wondering too. Like, is there like a set portal to the Forever After and Remnant and Team Ruby just and John and Neo just like, like you know, found the back door, I guess. Like you know they, they they like, like smashed the window and came through the house, whereas like Alex and um, Lewis like opened the door, opened the door and came in. You know, they knocked on the front door and said hi. Um... Yeah, pretty much. Like, like our our main characters made an en an entrance, but there could already be an existing entra entrance and exit the um the Alex and Lewis came from. So maybe they'll just be sent wherever that is, which you know we don't know where that could be. For all we know, that could be that QO, and then you know problem solved. But right. I don't. Know, I don't. I think based on their outfits, I don't. I don't know if I'd. Because like they don't, they're not really wearing like desert appropriate clothing, so I don't think. No, 
No, once they, they get like, to vacuo, they, they need... What if they what? end up in Mistral? I'd, they I'd could end up in Mistral. Or... Maybe dude, they... what if... Oh, dude. What if they end up in... Like, what if the tree specifically targets, like, Ruby's mind or something? I don't know. I don't know how this tree works. Um, but, like, what if it specifically targets Ruby's mind and they end up in Patch? No, oh, maybe. Hmm. I mean, hey. Team Ruby gets to meet Ty. Or why some Blake duo? You know what I mean. Um, yeah. Uh, to be fair, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't be yeah, scary yeah. for Blake at all. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely not. Use, um, their, use their dad right now, so. Oh yeah, no, they 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 could use some 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 sort of comfort right now. Um, and also, you know, give Ty some relief of seeing his goals again. Yeah. Uh, my only my only request to Ty at that point is like, hey, by the way, call Crow. <laughs> we have, well, we... you know what? What if Raven's there? I I mean, hmm, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and then boom, she just makes a portal to Crow. Yeah. There you go. Um, for the for the entirety since Volume Five, Raven just been chilling at Patch with Ty, <laughs> <laughs> couch surfing. I mean, I don't know. Raven probably had her. Raven had her own stuff to sort out. Maybe she needed to go to. Maybe yeah. she needed to go to Ty. So I don't know. Yeah, probably not. Maybe, maybe in all this time, Raven and Ty had made up. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know how long it's been. God, imagine, imagine Yag's reaction. Oh gosh, <laughs> I didn't even Just think about like, that. You've got to be kidding me. Well, okay. Let me let me uh, let me let me clarify. I don't think Raven or, or and Ty would like get back together. I think it's back together. Yeah. I, I think I, 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 I think it'd be civil. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they could like pat like patch things out. Pa patch. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, that that could be a way. True. Um. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's just, that's that's really something I've never thought of before. It's like I just, I guess we just yeah, kind of really something we ever like talked about weirdly enough, like the entirety of the volume. We never brought up like, okay, where would they go after? Yeah, it's like we, I guess we just kind of assumed that like, yeah, they just end up in vacuo, you know, problem solved, easy peasy. Um, yeah, because that's like the most plot convenient. But like, but we have no basis for that. Um, yeah, unless like the tree is a god or something like that, which it might be. It might just be able to be like, oh yeah, I'm connected to Remnant. Here you go. I'll I'll drop you wherever. Yeah. I mean, for all we know, this is where the two brothers have been hanging out. No, maybe. <laughs> Imagine that. Um. Well, Ozma's not been doing his job then, has he? <laughs> no, definitely not. Um. Is that um. It? Yeah, I guess so. Um. So with that, I I hope you got some form of uh, levity from this episode, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed us talking about it. Um, and uh, well, I mean, pray for these people. Uh, fingers crossed they get therapy soon. Um, Especially like, Ruby. Yeah, like yesterday, perhaps. Um, um, and I guess we'll see you next week. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.